You are listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Well, there's a new and modern way to tag your animal after harvest in Arizona, and it's all done from your smartphone. Hi, I'm John Treeweiler with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. On this episode of Wild About Arizona, we're talking about electronic tagging and the new Arizona eTag app. With us is Luke Thompson. Luke, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, good morning, John. Thank you. You are our, I think I'm... I, I'm going to get your title wrong, but you're our Habitat and Lands Branch Chief? Yeah, so it's <laughs> okay. it's the Habitat um, habitat Branch Chief for short, but uh, the long title's the Habitat Evaluation and Lands Branch. I knew I was going to miss a word in there, yep. but <laughs> all good. So tell us about this app and what it does. This is exciting. Yeah, it really is, John. And, um, you know, we've been... And I'll just start off. We've been on this journey for some time now as a department, trying to expand um, the delivery of and access to you know electronic licenses, electronic tags, et cetera. The commission really challenged us over a well, probably probably eight plus years ago to begin exploring electronic licenses. We moved through that. We developed our portal systems, et cetera. And about two years ago, we launched into building the Arizona eTag app. Um, the the charge for the team was to be able to deliver a product to Arizonans. Um, well, truthfully, every hunter that hunts within the state of Arizona, um, non-residents included, to, to provide an avenue to tag their animal electronically, as well as to complete hunter questionnaire data in the field in real time and to, to provide that option in place of our current paper tag system. Yeah, and so literally people can take their smartphone out into the field and uh, they can tag their animal electronically. Yeah, they can. It, um, you know, the, the process to get the app, right? It, the app's available currently in the app store and in the Google play store, depending on the platform of smart device that customers have. Um, but once you download that device and, and opt in uh, for an electronic tag in your account, in your portal account, um, those, Tags get delivered to the phone. You participate in a hunt just like you would with a paper tag, but instead of the paper tag, you've got your phone with you, and you complete the tagging process utilizing your phone and um, so a material of your choice. And it, we'll get into that here in a minute. I yeah, suspect. we'll talk so, about some of the the details to some of this. But yep. so, like you said, it's in the 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 Apple App Store, the Google Play Store. Correct. They just search uh, Arizona e tag, and it pops right up. Right. Arizona e tag. Correct. So you kind of touched on a little bit, but maybe get into a little more depthly. Kind of why did we develop this app? I know this was a commission priority, but there's some other, you know, there, there's 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 a myriad of other reasons why we developed this app. I mean, and number one, it's great for our customers. It's a cost savings for the department, right? I mean, this is just beneficial, you know, in, in the long run that we have an app like this. Not to mention it, you know, gets us. It's 2023, right? You know, we're 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 playing along with everybody else. I think I think you hit the highest points there. At the end of the day, we've seen the evolution of how we all interact on our phones in our lives, banking apps, um, you name it, apps for your kids' schools. Um, this was a natural progression for the department to move here. We're not the first state to move into this world. There, um, there were seven or eight other states that have also developed an, electro- an electronic tagging platform through an app. Um, but the way the world's interacting uh, on on those devices, it was a natural step to to be able to provide this for our customers. In addition to what you described, though, for benefits, there's a really important benefit I don't want to overlook with the phone, and that's the immediate reporting of harvest data. The ability to immediately report your harvest in the field as you're utilizing the app and have that data immediately synced to our systems just inherently makes the data stronger. It makes us more effective as we're working with the commission to develop recommendations for our hunting seasons, and it allows the commissions to make those decisions based on um, real-time, up-to-date information. And it's not that we don't have that now, but the app provides it real-time where we don't have to wait several months to receive that after the hunting seasons are over. Right, because that was, you know, it, was, it wasn't instant right away before. Correct. Um, okay, so I've got the app downloaded, and it's on my phone, and you, when it's on your phone, you can, you know, log into your portal account, see what you need to do, 
But the really important part here, and this is a really important step for people who are going to download the app, you have to go to your portal account and opt in to use electronic tagging. Explain this to us and because we don't want anyone to miss a step. Correct, and um, very critical step, right? So think of it as a two-step process. You download the app, and if you want to participate in electronic tags, you go to your portal account, and right on the right on the dashboard page of your portal account where it displays all of your customer information, et cetera, the option to opt in to electronic tags is there, and it's a simple um, click the button to opt in. It'll confirm that you want to opt in, and you will be opted in from that point forward. It's, it's important to note that it is only only from that point forward. So any tags that you received through a draw prior to opting in or any over-the-counter tags that you may have purchased prior to opting in will not populate on your phone as an electronic tag. It's only from the point forward of opting in. That's really important when it comes to the draw cycles as well. We're we're approaching one of the spring draws as an example for elk and antelope. And if customers want to participate in the electronic tag program for those hunts, they need to opt in before the draw is over. Otherwise, they will continue to receive a paper tag even if they've downloaded the app. So it's a very important step on the portal to got opt it. in. So just because you download it doesn't mean you're going to get it. You've got to opt in Correct. and do that probably before you apply for the draw. Correct. Yep. That would be ideal. <laughs> that would be ideal. <laughs> yeah. If you would like your tags to appear on your phone, please. Uh, so, okay, so I've opted. So I've downloaded. I've opted in. Say I'm successful in the draw, um, and my tags will automatically then populate in the app, correct? They'll automatically populate within the app. And then I go on my hunt, and I'm successful, and... Just kind of explain how that works with the hunter in the field and kind of what they have to do. I mean, the app basically kind of walks you through step by step what you would need to do. It does. So when you're when you're in the field during your hunt, you'll notice on the tag, uh, on the electronic tag, the opportunity to tag your animal or uh, complete the hunter questionnaire. There's two options. If you're successful, you simply select tag your animal and just like just like you'd select any other option on any other app on your phone. And it moves you through a, a, a couple screens to answer the, the information regarding your hunter questionnaire. So you'll, you'll enter the information about the harvest, the, the date, the location of the, the unit that you're in. And, um, and then it'll move you through and it'll provide a validation code in the app. That validation code, then the, the hunter would then write that validation code on a piece of material of their choice. We're asking for the material to be durable, such as tape or um, flagging, you know, that folks may mark a driveway on construction with flagging, something like that. Sure. But piece of flagging, piece of tape, wrap that around the antler with the validation code. And proceed along your proceed along your way. You hit confirm in the app, and all that information is stored in the app. That provides you evidence of legality. When you visit with one of our wildlife managers and you get field checked with your harvest, all the information is on the phone, and you have the validation code on the antlers. And the process would be uh, that would be the process as opposed to the paper tag process. And so, it's that simple. And you know what I think another cool part about this is, because I know you've heard this and you've probably seen this working out in the field, is that, you know, say someone's driving and they're, you know, two hours away from home and, oh, crap, my tag is on my kitchen counter. What do I do now? You know? Yep. Not a problem anymore. Your phones are always with us. Correct. Yeah. That was... uh when when I was in the field, that was a very common piece, especially folks driving long way from home. Uh, they get a long way from home and realize the tag's in a backpack on the kitchen table, and they have to stop at a regional office. Um, but one piece in common is that, like I say, as we've all evolved into the use of these devices, that's the common thread. We always have our we always have our phones with us. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So important to note, Luke, that this is exciting and this is, you know, this is great. And we talked about how we've got this with us and evolved, but there are people out there that 
I think I saw one the other day, a flip phone. They're still existing and <laughs> they're still out there. And there's people that, you know, they don't, maybe even if they have a smartphone, they don't want to utilize the app. They prefer the paper tag method. They're fine with it. So it's important to note that this is optional. Absolutely, John, and great point. It's 100% optional. Um, the paper tag process will still remain for those that do not want to utilize an e-tag. Um, it's also important to note that... Um, you know, the paper tag process remains for duplicate tags as well should a phone get lost. And I know we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But, um, you know, the duplicate paper tag process will remain paper tag process in general for those that do not want to participate in the e-tag will still be an option. So some of the questions we've gotten, because um, there are a lot of questions, um, and even if you have the app, you can go in and look at our FAQ document and kind of read over some of those, right? So it's a lot of the frequently asked questions are right there in the app to kind of help educate people. Correct. Um, but one of the some of the more common ones are, you know, what do you do if you're outside of cell service? Obviously, a lot of these hunts are in remote areas of the state where there is no cell service, and we've made sure that that's not a problem. Wonderful point, and you're right. We, that was one of the main pieces we we were um, we were approached as we were building this app. That was one of the main pieces the public came to us about: is what happens when I'm remote or I'm horsebacking into a remote wilderness area for five days, and I my harvest happens over that five days, but I'm I don't have cell coverage. You know, the cool part about the app is once you have the app downloaded on your phone. If you're successful in the draw or you've purchased that over-the-counter tag and you've opted in and all that and the tag's delivered to your phone, all of that information is stored on the device. So there's, there's no need to have cell coverage when you can when you complete your harvest. Um, The app 100% works without cell coverage once all of the tag information has been delivered to the phone. Um, So there is an important step there, right, that prior to going on your hunt, take a look at your tag and make sure it's all on there. It will be, but um, make sure that information is there. And then you don't have to worry about whether you have cell phone coverage or not while you're on your hunt. The entire process to tag your animal works in remote areas. I'll also... um, I'll also say part of our our process, we had a pretty robust beta testing associated with this at several phases, right? And we sent folks all over the state to conduct tagging in remote areas. Um, Just as an example, we had folks up on the Arizona Strip in some of the most remote portions of the state conducting tagging on on the app to ensure that it would work. All types of scenarios were tested through there, um, you know, just to, again, to have that robust beta testing to ensure that really when it when it came down to it, our customers wouldn't be disappointed with the level of service of this app. Even your son helped out. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he was part of the team. Yep. Um, so, so, yeah. And, and the other point, too, to that, Luke, is that once – you so you, you once you get back into cell service, that hunter questionnaire that you've filled out will then populate back to us. Correct, and that was another piece. You know, we didn't want to create a, a multi step process for our customers. We wanted to streamline their their experience in the field. As soon as if in in the case of a successful hunter, as soon as they've completed the tagging process on the phone and their validation code is provided to them and they've confirmed it on the phone, their process is done. If they're in a remote area where they don't have cell coverage, where they harvest it, and then they return, it automatically syncs to um, to the department. We get that, that harvest data delivered immediately. So um, there's no additional step for our customers at that point. Okay, another common question that we uh, dealt with a lot was, what do I do if my phone runs out of battery or dies? Again, we're in remote areas. There's no power. You know, maybe you've got your truck to charge your phone. But, you know, if, if you're hiking and you're gone for a while, your phone dies. What do I do if that's my tag? Yeah. And, you know, that's part of the reality, I think, in general, as we've um, all become to rely on these devices more and more. Um, certainly, that's a consideration, if there's an alternative um, 
power source, a battery charger, et cetera, that somebody could carry with them. Um, in those instances, as far as charges related with the phone, yeah, it would be important to maintain that charge. But we're also not not looking to catch anybody in a bind. If that happens, you know, and and we're in that situation, you know, proceed as normal. And when your phone gets back into it gets charged, then you can take care of that and or contact us, one of the two. So Yeah, and you know, the the app has so much functionality, um and this is only the start really. There are just um great opportunities really kind of down the road for this app to continue to evolve and develop. There really are. And and in addition to just the the e-tag portion and the ability to answer the questionnaire, we've also built some cool features in it right now that um, that that customers as we were building this, they came to us and said, hey, it'd be really cool if you could put this in the app. One of them is the ability to see the archery deer, uh, bear, and mountain lion harvest thresholds in real time. Prior to having that information linked in the app, an individual would either have to go to our website and, and look at the form or they would have to call the 800 number to get the information for the unit that they wanted to hunt one of those three species in. We've built that into the app with a link. So if you've got the app and you're headed out on a Tuesday morning and you want to check the harvest status of that unit, of the unit you want to go hunt in, you can do that right through the app. We also have the, the ability in the app to direct an individual to the the our web page to be able to renew their hunting license. So the the app will house an electronic tag, but it also displays hunting and fishing licenses. So even if you're um, not going to participate in one of the big game draw hunts, but you're a bird hunter and you just have your regular hunting license, you can utilize this app and have that license displayed on the phone for legality in the field and you no longer have to have your paper copy of your license. Or the, say you're out. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say the app will also prompt customers as their license is is going to expire. And when you see that on the app, you simply go to the menu, the, click on, you know, purchase a license, and it'll it'll deliver you to the website to be able to renew your hunting license. So um, I just think of those types of, of value systems, when v- values added for customers when they're in the field and they need to do that. Um, I've been in that position where you, you leave home and you didn't realize that your, your hunting license is expiring and you got to stop and renew it, you know. Right. So, and, you know, and like the, the phone's, the app's going to prompt you and say, you know, hey, yep. uh, and then you can just do it right there. So again, it's it's convenience Correct. and it's for for our customers. Um, we've heard already. So this app has been at the time of this recording. Uh, the app has been live probably for about what I think five, six months, um, and it's we've already heard of successful hunters uh, having successful harvests utilizing the e-tag uh we've had great success stories already with this we have within within about a week or so of release of the app so the the app was released kind of right on the doorstep of the the archery the fall over the counter archery deer seasons and immediately we had folks downloading the app um, opting in for electronic tags purchasing an over the counter archery deer tag and tagging their deer within a week of the app going live and completing that process. Um, the the main pieces we've heard has been, they've been very positive. They, they love the fact that it's streamlined. They like the fact that everything's in one place on their phone. There's no additional paperwork to have to worry about when you're in the field. Because again, everybody's having their, their phone with them. Um, but we've had, we've had taggings across the state have occurred already with the phone um, for our archery deer hunts. Yep. And then as we're, we're moving into, you know, at the time of this recording, we're moving into the spring, spring turkey hunts are on our doorstep, spring javelina. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of folks with electronic tags in their pocket right now on their phone that'll be hunting in these seasons. Ready so, to go. Ready to go. <laughs> um, well, this is just all fascinating. And also, I think, big shout out to... Our, our folks here at the department and IT because we built this app in-house. We did. We did. And that's a really cool piece because we're one of the only states to do that. 
most of the other states that have implemented this have used a third-party vendor. The cool part about doing this in-house is we can deliver it in a manner that our customers expect. We know our customers best. We know who the hunters and anglers are in the state. We know what they want. We can deliver it the way that our customers want. And um, that's been a cool journey for me. I'm not a major tech guy when it comes to these things. Certainly, I... But you don't I, have a flip phone. <laughs> but I don't have a flip phone, you know, but um, and, but that's okay, you know, if, if folks do. But I I, um, I learned so much through this with our IT, our IT folks on what it takes to actually deliver this and have the systems talking on the back end. You know, that syncing of data, it, it, takes, um, it takes a lot. There's security pieces that we needed to ensure we addressed. Security was a major piece from the public as we were develop, developing this app. So making sure all those controls on the back end are there for, for customer security was was critical. And and building that internally, not only does it save the, the department and, and our customers money, but again, we can deliver it in a manner that they demand and for for something that, that is valuable for them. So Yeah, it, important points, Luke. And if people have questions about this or as this app continues to evolve um, and new features come on it, um, if people have questions or want to learn more or want to see that FAQ document um, or just want to reach out to us and ask a question, there's a, there's a way for them to do that, right? There is. There's multiple avenues, John. There's not only within the app, um, are, is there, are there self-help app, um, pages within the app with FAQs, how to utilize the app, et cetera. We've got information on our website. That's at azgfd.gov slash etag. That information, again, the, the information on how to download the app, how to participate in the etag, how to complete the tagging process, et cetera. It's all there. Um, certainly, uh, we have our CSRs as well in the regional offices across the state that can assist folks with the etag. So there's plenty of resources available for that. Um, the the cool part is it's a very intuitive app as well. It's not very complicated at all. We mentioned the beta testing. We had young folks um, walking us through this that, uh, or or walking through the app, I should say, that uh, helped beta test it. And it's very intuitive. And it's the the processes to, like to tag your animal. It takes less than less than a minute and a half, really, at the end of the day to tag your animal. So. Do you have a tag on your phone? Are you ready to go? Well, I, I do not. I was not <laughs> successful in the draws. So. Oh, dang it, Luke. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully next time. Yes, yes. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, and thanks for being with us. And again, like Luke said, uh, for more questions about this, uh, you can go to azgfd.gov forward slash e-tag. And again, the app is available in the Google Play Store and Apple App Store under Arizona e-tag. Luke, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov.